Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Free on Steam. This week, we're going to take a look at... Actually, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do this as a weekly thing or a... Or maybe, like, every three days or something. I don't know. I'll figure this out. This is a new segment, so I'm going to work out what I'm doing with it. Anyway, this day we're going to look at dwarves. Yes, it's free on, on Steam, and it's a it's a different game. I don't really know what my opinions of it are. And all I've really done is a tutorial, which kind of makes me wonder whether it's a game I will even enjoy doing over a long period of time, or whether it's just one I would pick up every now and then, play, and then delete from my library because I got bored of it. And then after getting bored of everything else, playing it again. Anyway, with the... F there is actually two different Dwarfs games. Technically. There's the free-to-play one, which includes most of the stuff, but you would have to purchase the base defense part of it. So, I'm not going to be able to give you a look at that, because I haven't purchased it myself. Although, from what I understand, with the base defense, it works pretty similarly to other base defenses, except that you dig out the hallways that you want the enemies to go in, and then you place the towers along the hallways. So, let's go ahead and do an arcade mode quick, to give a kind of overview of the game. And we're just going to do a... Five minute, five minute one. So it's a very large map, honestly, for a five minute one. And as you can see, I have some dwarves here. This is a digger dwarf, and he will automatically start digging around on his own. This guy is a defensive dwarf or a soldier, and he guards your area. The defense dwarf never leaves the area of where he's stationed at until you tell him to go out in the halls. You can also tell your Digger Dwarf which way you want him to dig as well. And the way you do that is by left-clicking and dragging in a direction. This will create an arrow telling your Dwarf where you want him to go. Now while your Digger Dwarfs are digging, they can encounter areas, unexplored caverns. That's why I was going after. Now, you can find all kinds of things in these. You can find treasure, you can find absolutely nothing, you can find water, monsters, lava, and each one requires its own its own uh, situation to, well, its own uh, technique to handle the situation. With treasure and empty caverns, your dwarves just go about doing what they do. If there's treasure, they will pick it up. If there's monsters, the monsters will come to attack your dwarves and, well, you end up with dead dwarves. If you find monsters, you can order your your soldier dwarves to go out into the caves to attack the monsters. And we will hopefully get to that in a few moments. Now, for the most part, you want to let your dwarves do whatever they want to do. They will go ahead and dig, that will earn you about one gold every time they dig. They'll get experience digging. But every now and then, you do want to encourage them to go in specific directions. Like this guy, I want him to go check out this area to see if it's safe to go through. If it's not, then we need to handle that situation. So I'm going to tell him to dig over here. Now, placing these arrows costs money to do so. But, it does give your dwarf a little boost on how fast he goes. And I'm going to tell him to go up this way now because there is minerals here I want him to dig up. Minerals give you a lot more money, which lets you give a lot more orders. You also want to zoom out every now and then to see where all your dwarves are going because they usually dig off in different directions. And 
for the most part, they seem to avoid digging towards caverns, which is actually a pretty good thing, because if they always dug right into a cavern, you could end up with multiple crises to handle. This guy, however, is going straight for that cavern, and look at that treasure! Wonderful, glorious, shiny coins. Mm -hmm. I want you heading in this direction, because there's minerals. Oh, another treasure cave. Normally I would have found a monster cave by now, but it seems like we're not having much luck doing that this time. Let's get this guy going over here. And hopefully it'll be a dangerous cavern. I don't know what style of game to call this. I mean... Some people would say a Dungeon Keeper style game, but it's not really a Dungeon Keeper game because you're not actually constructing rooms to send things into. Or you're not really constructing rooms at all. You're just having dwarves dig tunnels and hoping that ends up good. Again, that empty tunnel. This just won't do. You! Go down here. Expose this cavern and tell me if it's bad. Another treasure cave! Jeez! Okay, you dig over here and tell me if it's bad. Then I want you to dig over here. I'm determined to find a treasure cave in the next... Not a treasure cave, a danger cave in 15... Ah, there we go. Alright, pause it quick. So, as you see, we found a cave full of water, and the dwarf died. Oops. And, actually, pausing does not last very long. So, in order to stop this, we need... Oh, never mind. Time's... Time's up. <laughs> wow. So, I got a score. Not that high of a score, but hey, it was just a five minute game. Didn't get to do very much, so... You know, whatever. I also kind of wonder why there is... Night Elves from World of Warcraft... That are half naked... In this game. <laughs> I'm sure it's probably explained if I... Actually play more of the campaign, but... I guess... They're there. So while we're on this high score thing, let's talk about this interface down here. This represents what you're doing with your mouse. Well, what your left click is going to do. By default, it is placing arrows. However, if you hold down the shift key, you will place a wall. Now, a wall's purpose is to wall off a passage so that if water is coming down, it will stop the water. If lava is coming down, it will temporarily stop the lava, but the lava will eventually burn through. And you can, it also will stop monsters for a moment or two, but the monsters will eventually break through the wall. The only way you can stop a monster is by killing it. <clears throat> and by pressing control, you will turn regular dirt into indestructible stone. You do this to completely seal off a dangerous cavern. Doing so gains you extra points, which is always a good thing. So I'm going to start up a longer game. And I'll let it run for a bit, and when it gets to the point where I find some more dangerous caverns, I will rejoin the video. See you soon. So, we finally encountered something dangerous. I found minions, and they appear to be spider eggs, and they now have hatched, which means this dwarf is pretty much dead, and the spiders are now running rampant in the tunnels, and one of them is actually heading towards my dwarven home. Now they're not too big of a danger, and when they get near, these dwarves actually get 
you know, mad and go to kill the spider. Okay. However, there's a spider that is currently killing my little dwarfling here. And now he's dead. But, that's alright. That's the life of a dwarfling. There we go. So that's how you order these guys around. And let's see what my dwarves have done while I've been busy focusing on that. Now well, they haven't really done much. Not surprising. They don't do much. And is this a dangerous cavern? Of course not. It never is. Alright, so what do you do when your dwarves that are supposed to defend the place are out and about? Well, one good thing to do is get rid of these things. That's what the X thing is for. Then you want to call them back with this bell. That'll send all the dwarves that are supposed to be at this post running back to the area. Are you checking this out? Is this a bad place for you to go? Uh oh, a dwarf struck, struck water, and this one struck lava! Two hazards at once. Alright, so let's make a wall quick. There we go. That water is now secure for the time being. But it won't last forever. This lava is also rushing down the hall in a pretty slow pace, so let's put a couple walls in front of it. And then we want to put a piece of dynamite here. Now, I need to get a dwarfling over here to activate that dynamite. Unfortunately, the nearest dwarfling I have is pretty far away. So most likely this dynamite is going to end up getting blown up by the lava itself. Oh boy, you're getting close to that water. Right, let's start solidifying this stuff around. And another dwarfling did something stupid. Go figure. not perfectly sealed. Oh, well, I have extra money. And lava has burned through all my walls, which is bad. <laughs> Alright, I need you. blow this up. There we go. So, that lava is not going to be able to pass down the hallways anymore, but it's still a danger. I can't figure out why this one won't. Let me... This is completely enclosed. I can't actually dig to the water. It's not letting me actually... seal this off. It could be a bug. It might want me to blow up any any chance of the water getting through as well. <clears throat> Which doesn't work. Oh boy, you're getting close. And now I'm out of money. Which happens pretty fast if you are trying to seal up multiple areas. Fortunately, one of my doors struck a silver ore vein, which is good. But not good enough. You look expendable enough. How about you go blow up for me? I need to get more money. Hmm. Oh, hey! Thanks for... Thanks for doing that. <laughs> 
treasure caves, they're always helpful. Alright, that dwarf's gonna follow this all the way down now. And... It still didn't fit seal it off. It's not supposed to require you to make holes in order to seal it. It's supposed to just get sealed. Oh well, I guess if it wants me to blow up holes, I don't have a problem with that. And now it's sealed, although it's kind of broken. In the tutorial, you actually just needed to wall it off and surround it with impenetrable stone. Apparently that's not the case for this current mode. Of course, it always could just be a bug, which tends to happen in games, I know. There. That's sealed off. And this is pretty much the gist of this game. <clears throat> you can also place down a stronghold, or an outpost, I mean. Which takes some time to build, but then you can add some guard dwarves to it. Then you can have them actually train there so they can gain experience. This is important because you can find very strong minions that require a decent amount of ability on your dwarves part in order to actually take out. Of course, training does cost money. Ten per dwarf. And it deducts that... And it deducts ten per dwarf every couple seconds. You can imagine that when you get into a much bigger game and things have gone on for a while, it gets to be kind of hard to actually keep track of all this stuff. Because your dwarflings are out everywhere, just digging away at everything they can, and you always have to pay attention to if they're gonna blunder into some danger or do something that could completely wipe out your entire kingdom. I still haven't figured out what you could call this for a game style. I suppose I would just call it a micromanaging game. Because that's mainly what you do, you... Oh, speaking of stronger dwarves, or things that require stronger dwarves, this is a shaman. And he can wipe out your dwarflings very fast. Now, how do we get these guys over there without using a whole bunch of whole bunch of pathing arrows. These outposts are equipped with a cannon. And as you see, they have a certain range. Luckily, this guy is right in our range. So let's launch our dwarves over here. And they surround him. Now, the dwarves on his backside actually are going to get a slight bonus to their combat. And thanks to that, they made really short work. And if I ring the bell, the dwarves are going to come rushing back down the caves. And it looks like they're just going to miss the goblins that are running around. That's too bad. It means we're probably going to lose some more dwarf life. Could get some more dwarves over here as well. So let's... Let's just finish out this game. It's only a couple minutes left. I might be able to find some other danger that the dwarves wander into. Like down here. And just make sure that he actually digs into the cave instead of wandering away from it. Oh look! Another shaman cave! How wonderfully lucky! Not really. <laughs> That's bad. 
Well, I suppose we can build an outpost here just to act as a barrier between the main town and the shaman. Although I don't think it's actually going to be close enough to get dwarves launched over here. And a dwarf has released some minions. Looks like another bit of spiders. Cannon dwarves, launch! <laughs> I love that cannon. And the goblin minions are severely outnumbered. Oh yes, that little circle right there is another important thing I need to talk about. This shaman actually creates summoning circles, which will summon minions. And the longer he lives, the faster he creates those circles. Oh good, we are in range. Oh, dwarves, fire! Surround the shaman, destroy him! I love the sound effects. <laughs> Ring the bell and the doors will rush home. 36 seconds left. What the heck is that? Oh, it's a mushroom. I thought it was like a kobold face or something. Oh, more minions. And these are actually just peon goblins. Not a huge concern, but a big enough one that I'm going to send my dwarves out to kill. And we are done. Oop. Squares discovered quite a bit. And we got a pretty decent score. So this is Dwarves. As, I, as always, it's available on Steam. And let's see, the kind of person I'd recommend this game to? Well, pretty much anyone. It's, it's a simple enough game for pretty much anyone to just pick up and learn. But, I don't know. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and goodbye.